Hello. Once again, I am incredibly grateful for you taking time out of your busy day, busy week, to join in and stay tuned uh, with what God is doing in our church and to participate in the message that I believe God has given us today. This past month or so has been incredibly rewarding and satisfying to me as a pastor. You know, I've been in ministry for over 30 years, and God has been so good to our family. In fact, some of you, you've met some of our friends from previous churches. Some have traveled through Missoula, some have stayed with us, and uh, some of them have joined us for church. I've been so blessed with friends in those churches that we've been a part of. But I want to make a statement, and it's not an overstatement. I've never been more excited than what God is doing right here, right now, in Missoula. Let me share briefly. Last Sunday afternoon, I was sent this text by uh, with from someone in our church. Three thirty one (laughs) prayer. Check. First time in a while, I really got on my knees and prayed and poured my heart out to God and asked for guidance and change felt good now it's just consistency and learning to give him time to answer another shared that they had 13 in their life group this past week and the conversation they had about god's word was so good he said this we are really studying the bible it's been so amazing and then it was shared how this past week there were several that were new first-time guests they not only have never been to their group they've never been to our church church before so cool i had a conversation with someone who was struggling a bit about faith and questions regarding god and the bible and he acknowledged this that there is more evidence to believe in god than not believe when i tried paying for our dinner (laughs) the waitress said someone had already paid for it i was blown away great conversation and free food i mean can you ask for anything more than that two young men that attend our church both of them work uh in construction and two days ago at 3 31 in the afternoon one of their watches went off alarming them letting them know that it's time to pray and they both paused and they both prayed together for god to help us raise a hundred thousand dollars for our new building for 150 in attendance on Easter, and that 25 people will come to know Jesus Christ because of our service on Easter Sunday. And they did this on the job site. Tuesday night, I got a text from Daryl, who did our greeting today, and he told me that he was moved in his life group to do our greeting. And it was based on the conversation they were having in their life group about how to have intentional spiritual conversations with complete strangers. That was the topic of their conversation. I'm telling you, God is doing something absolutely incredible. Tuesday morning, I'm having breakfast with Evan, who feels called to the ministry, and we are having, uh, we are just having incredible conversations each week as we meet. We're talking this Sunday, or this Tuesday, about God's grace, that he was studying this, and, and I told him one way to think about God's grace is it is undeserved favor or undeserved goodness of God. God does something for us that we do not deserve. Favor. There truly is something I think about and pray about all the time. We had our Bibles open on the table and both of us were getting a little excited, a little rambunctious and uh, and uh, when the, the waitress came back to uh, to ask if we needed anything. I had my card out and I handed it to her. She's a waitress at Paul's Pancakes. And I said, I'd like to take care of our breakfast. And she looked at me and she said, someone already did. (laughs) This all happened while Evan and I are talking about the goodness of God. It just happened right in front of our eyes. I didn't know anyone in the restaurant that morning. And the same is true for what happened just a couple of weeks before. So when we were told someone paid for our breakfast while we were talking about God's favor, it was just a special reminder of how much God truly loves us. 
I'm telling you, I just feel like God is smiling upon us. The conversations, both you pressing in and learning about God and how you are excited about the Bible, about learning, about helping others experience Jesus. Word is getting out and God is doing what only he can do. You are on fire for God. Only God. Only God could do these things. For example, in a couple weeks, the first Tuesday in March, we're starting a life group just outside Stevensville. If you're interested in this, uh, send me a message. I'll give you more information. Uh, But I would encourage you, if you're a part of Stevensville or the Bitterroot uh, area, invite your friends, invite people. Ryan and Debbie moved here just a couple of months ago. And we walked through their home just a little over a week ago. And we prayed over the doors of their home. And we asked God to do something bigger than we could do ourselves. We don't know what he's going to do. But I'm all in. So Tuesday nights, please be praying and invite others to be part of something very special. I believe with all my heart that there will be people in heaven because of what we do in Tuesday nights, which makes last week's message so important for where we are as a church. We looked at the miracle of Peter walking on the water with Jesus, and it's such a great story, and it's also a disappointing one for me. I say that, well, because there were 11 that did nothing that day they just sat around they didn't get up they didn't get involved with the whole business of walking on the water don't you dare church don't you dare be like those 11 things are going to happen god is going to answer prayer lives are going to be changed he's going to increase the faith of some people he's going to increase the joy that others have and give people an expectancy that's going to come out of our life groups i believe this with all my heart and so can i say this get in one if you're in the area go to our website and find out what life groups are meeting there's new ones that are starting within the next week or so and i can't encourage you enough to be a part of that Now, with that in mind, I want to begin with this verse. Psalm chapter 84, verse 11. Psalms 84, verse 11 says this. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Isn't that a wonderful promise? God will not hold back anything from us who do what is right. There are many ways that God chooses to bless those who follow him. And I'd like to share several this morning that maybe you've never even considered or thought about. Things that are considered a blessing for those of us who follow Jesus Christ. And the first is this, peace. Peace is such a beautiful word. And the peace I'm talking about is not the absence of war type of peace. No, this kind of peace that God provides is a calm spirit where your soul is at rest no matter what kind of chaos might be happening in your life. Philippians chapter 4. Let's read these incredible verses beginning with verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise keep putting into practice what you learned and received from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing then the god of peace will be with you and then look at verse 13 for i can do everything through christ what a beautiful beautiful promise and in fact i would say this one of the best scriptures you could ever memorize is philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 13 
I know some of you might be thinking, memorizing 15 verses in a row, that's crazy, isn't it? Well, how many songs can you sing word for word? You know how you are able to do that? You've listened to that song over and over and over again. And now you can sing it word for word. There is nothing more valuable, more precious, and that, and that can help you become more of who God wants you to be than memorizing scripture. And so you find those scriptures that are meaningful to you, that speak to your heart, and you read them like you're listening to a song over and over again. Read the scripture over and over and over again. And you'll find out it's really not that hard to memorize. And here's why I would encourage you to do that. Because chaos happens. It might be all good in the hood for you right now. And if it is, that's great. But life has a way of throwing curveballs. And sometimes they come from all different directions. What's interesting is that some of those curveballs might be good and exciting, but they are mixed in with other things that are uncertain. And maybe one of them is a great cause for concern. In fact, if you weren't a Christian, your whole world would be falling apart. But falling apart, church, falling apart isn't what Christians do. We don't fall apart. We fall into the arms of Jesus. Let him give you peace. That's the promise of Philippians 4. Christians are blessed because we are promised a peace that passes understanding, a peace that you can't explain to those who don't follow Christ. You have a calmness of your soul that is completely unexplainable to those who don't have a relationship with Jesus. You can have that peace, a peace the world knows nothing about. You know, in Missoula, we've not had a good old blizzard this winter yet. I sure hope we do. You know, the type where the wind is blowing like crazy and snow is coming down sideways and everything shuts down for a day or two. I'm talking about a blizzard where you get so much snow that you have to go out several times to clean the sidewalks and your driveway. Several times. And after coming in the first time, you know it's so cold outside, but you walk in the door and you close the door and it's so warm inside. And you grab a cup of hot chocolate and you sit down and you maybe wrap a blanket around yourself and you're so grateful if you have a fireplace that the fire's on and our yellow lab, if we were home, our yellow lab would be curled up in front of that fire and everything about that scene is peaceful. Even though there's a storm happening on the other side of the door. Let Jesus be the door. Let Jesus be the door between chaos and calm. Let him take care of you. Fall into the precious and loving arms of Jesus. It's certainly better than falling apart. What a blessing. Here's another hope. Have you considered how great hope is? Hope shifts attention from what is happening now to a preferred future, to something that is better or greater. And it truly is all about perspective. I've had plenty of conversations with people who easily get discouraged by what they experience in life. And oftentimes that discouragement leads to this question. Why does God allow this? I mean, if God truly loves me, why does he allow pain in my life? Why does God allow this situation to happen to me? What they're really asking is why do bad things happen to good people? Which leads me to making this statement. That's our problem, isn't it? Our focus is off. Because this place, planet Earth, was never meant to be as good as it gets. Look around. I know we live in paradise, but it certainly isn't 
heaven. This is not our forever home. And so no matter what you are facing, listen, God is here and God is for you. Listen to these words from Psalms chapter 33. No king is saved by his great army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. But the Lord looks after those. But the Lord looks after those who fear him. Those who put their hope in his love. He saves them from death and spares their lives in times of hunger. So our hope is in the Lord. He is our help, a shield to protect us. What a beautiful promise. The next blessing is one of my favorites. It's the word guidance. Many times over the course of my life, I've had to make a decision that will impact not only myself, but others. And then after I got married, it's not only others, it's now my wife and my children. And so those huge decisions that we make, they are so important. Like where to go, what, what, what are you going to have for dinner? <laughs> that seems to be something that every one of us talks about and we take so long to figure it out. When in doubt, just choose your favorite or if you're married, your wife's favorite. But when the consequences are significant, when you're facing a decision that matters, it's important to choose right. Where to go, go to college. What should I choose for a career? Who should I date? Where should I live after graduating? Should I buy this home or the other? God wants to be an active voice in your life and will guide and direct if you just listen and pay attention to his voice. Steen and I have made three major moves in our lives of, or in our years of marriage. And in each of those moves, God guided our decisions. Before we came to Missoula, we actually scheduled a couple of days with a realtor here in town to look at homes. We had looked at six homes, and any one of them would have worked. Any one of them would have checkmarked most of the boxes. But it was the seventh home that we, we, uh, when we drove up and, and we walked through it, it was like, there is something different about this home. We finished walking through it and we, we stepped outside and I looked at our realtor and I said, you know, I want to take one more look at it. And so we went back through the home one more time rather quickly. And as we left the house, we got into our realtor's truck. I made this statement to him, which is a pretty bold statement considering the fact that I made it without actually saying I was going to uh, say this to my wife. I said to our realtor, I believe we need to make an offer on this home. And immediately <laughs> my wife said, yes, we do. Now that kind of thing does not happen without God and his guidance and, a, and an assurance that this is the right decision. I've learned and leaned on the promise and blessing of Proverbs chapter 16. Listen to these words. We can make our plans, but the Lord gives the answer. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Let's end with this one. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to be afraid of. The blessing is courage. This is really what we've been talking about the past couple of weeks, but it's so important to land on it just one more time. I was in a conversation on Friday with a new friend. I hope he comes to our church. I'm meeting with him again this week. We talked about all sorts of things, and he's going to share his story with me this Wednesday. And he told me to be prepared because he says, I'm probably going to get emotional, and I'm probably going to cry. But he made this statement in our conversation. It's my faith that keeps me from being afraid which is so awesome. And if only those of us who follow Jesus Christ would understand that. Our God, He loves us, and because we serve an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God, shouldn't we have courage? 
I don't mean the kind of courage where, where we're not afraid of the dark. No, I mean the kind of courage that when God asks us to do something, when we discover our purpose, when we hear his voice, that no matter what, no matter what he is asking us to do, we will say, yes, of course. Yes, with all my heart. I've learned this. It's incredible. I've never been so courageous in my life. I mean about anything, as long as God is in it. And I hope that you can learn to trust God like that. I remember when we believed with all of our hearts that we were supposed to move to Missoula to plant a church. And I told my pastor at the time, I said, here's what we're supposed to do, and here's where we're supposed to do it, but I'm a little afraid. And he looked at me and he goes, what are you afraid of? The very next morning, God did something so beautiful because he said over and over and over and over again to me this phrase, I love you. What do you have to be afraid of? I love you, Carmen. What do you have to be afraid of? And here's the answer. Nothing. It's why the phrase found in the Bible over 365 times is this. Do not be afraid. It's like a a one-a-day vitamin. One for every day of your life, every day of the year. Do not be afraid. Have courage. Proverbs 28, verse 1 says this. The godly are as bold as lions. I want to direct your attention back to the verse that we started with this morning. Psalm 84, verse 11. Because it holds a key in it that I don't want you to miss. Everything depends on this key. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. In other words, it's up to us. If we want to experience the goodness of God, if we want to experience His blessing, His favor, listen, salvation is a free gift from God. It's available to all. All you have to do is believe on Jesus Christ. But these things that I've talked about this morning, those require an act on our part. We must do what is right. We must obey and follow Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful you've joined in. Let me pray for us. God, if you did nothing else for me, I still would consider myself more blessed than I deserve and one of the most blessed men I've ever met. I just believe that with all my heart. And the beauty of it is I don't think you're done. I think you have more in store for us. And so I joyfully anticipate to experience whatever it might be, whatever conversation, whatever situation you put me in, whatever hard circumstance that I am put in that causes me to lean in a little closer and trust you just a little more, I embrace it because I want to experience everything that you have for me. And Father, I pray that that would be the prayer of all in this room and all who are listening in. Help us to trust you. Help us to experience and to do whatever it is that we need to to experience all that you have for us. You are such a good and amazing God. Thank you. Amen. If you're in the area, I just want to invite you once again. Sunday mornings, 11 o'clock, our address is on our website, on our Facebook page. It would be a true delight to have you join in person with us here on Sunday mornings. I pray you have a wonderful day and a great week.